So, so we are actually able to make some interesting conclusions, you know, from uh, on African American patients based on the number of patients we have in the study. So, and some of the things we found, and this is not just for African American patients, but for all patients in the study, is that there's different therapies that myeloma patients take. And there's some uh, patients who take like a doublet therapy, which means they're taking two medications at a time, and some that take a triplet therapy, which is three different medications at one time. And we have found that that type of therapy, taking these three well-known um, and, and um, very effective medications, and I'm sure Dr. Giza will be talking about this as we move forward, that actually is better than taking two. Also, we found that having a stem cell transplant is very, very effective for myeloma patients. It's one of the best things that patients can do to improve the outcome in their life. We've also been able to categorize some of the different types of multiple myeloma. So here you can see on this chart, we found at least 12 types, and this, this number of types will actually increase as we move forward and do more research. And this is based on the different types of genomics, different types of DNA in different patients. So we're really beginning to define the DNA in myeloma patients and how that can affect their disease. So there's good news and there's bad news for African American patients when it comes to myeloma. So some of the bad news, as we've already discussed, African American patients are two to three times more likely to be diagnosed with myeloma than members of, of other ethnic groups. And that's really, really every other ethnic group. So it's really the, um, the, the likely Hood of diagnosis is actually higher in this community, not just for myeloma, but also for MDUS, which one of our speakers was talking about earlier, and that's the precursor disease for myeloma. So that, that development of that precursor is also higher in the African American community, and it's also more uh, susceptible to progressing from the precursor disease to the full-blown disease in the African American community, and we know that and that African Americans are also diagnosed with myeloma at an earlier age than other ethnic groups, maybe five to 10 years earlier. The general age that people are diagnosed with this, this disease is in the mid 60s, and the African community is seeing this disease develop at an earlier age. And also we know from research that African Americans are less likely to undergo stem cell transplants for different reasons. And um, this is, as I was saying before, we know that stem cell transplant is a very important and very effective therapy. So we wanna to try to change that, um, that statistic. So here's the good news. We know from the COMPASS study that the genomics of myeloma is different in the African American community than it is in other ethnic groups. Not only is it different, but it's actually the disease that we see in African Americans is actually not as high risk as, as in some other groups. So, that being said, we know from our COMPASS study where everyone in COMPASS is treated with the same level of care. When everyone is treated with the same level of care because myeloma in African Americans is not as high risk, outcomes are just as good or better. If the level of care is the same, the outcomes are the same. This we know from Compass. So here's what we need to do, and here's why we're here. We need to raise awareness in the African American community regarding myeloma and the increased risk of diagnosis. We need to educate the African American community about myeloma and the signs and symptoms, and that will take place today. We need to educate myeloma patients and caregivers in the African American community regarding what the best and newest treatments are. Because if you know what they are, you can talk to your doctor about it. We've already talked to you about the fact that many doctors don't see very many myeloma patients, so it's important for you to have this knowledge. And we need to teach African American patients and every patient who is a myeloma patient to really advocate for their own care to consult with a myeloma expert. This is very important. Some of our panelists have already spoken about this, how important it is to, to consult with a myeloma specialist, somebody who treats lots of myeloma patients so that you can get the best level of care, and how to communicate with your care team to be able to um, get the types of um, treatment that you know is going to give you the best outcome for your disease. So 
we have a number of resources at the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation that I wanted to make you aware of that can help you if you're diagnosed with myeloma, if somebody in your family is diagnosed with myeloma, if somebody you know is, multiple, is diagnosed. So we have what we call the Right Track Program. We know that it's very important when you have myeloma, when you're diagnosed, the first thing to do is to be able to find the right team of doctors to be your treatment partners. So that you need to talk to, pay, to doctors who have experience treating myeloma patients. You need to have the right testing done. We talked about that a little bit already this morning and we'll continue to talk about that some more to be able to, to define the type of myeloma that you have and then make sure you're getting the right treatment for your disease, your specific disease. And we do have some, um, some other resources available for you. Um, if you go to our website, you will see that we have um, a patient support center. You can call our nurses during the week from 9 a.m. till 7 p.m. at night and speak to them and ask them any questions that you have. They can help you with information, they can help you with resources, they can help you um, um, find care. There's many things that they can do for you. So I would encourage you to, you know, if you're diagnosed, if you know someone who's diagnosed, contact the nurses and see how they can help you with your disease journey. And we encourage you, as you, if you're a patient, and as you're moving through your, your disease journey, we encourage you to share with us, share your data, share anything, your clinical information. We encourage you, as we've discussed already, and we will continue to discuss today, to enroll in a clinical trial, because we know how important it is to have everyone, every ethnic group, represented in clinical trials so that everyone can get the best care. Vitally, vitally important. Um, we encourage you to connect with us and stay connected with us on our website. Follow us on Facebook. We have the most uh, up-to-date uh, information about myeloma, so if you need to learn, we are a great source of learning. And then we're going to be starting a patient registry probably after the first of the year. It'll be very easy. You can do it online. And that way, everyone, everyone can contribute their information to our data without even involving your doctor. It's really easy, you just go online and we will help you. Anyone can become involved in this patient registry and all the information that we gather is helpful to every patient. And we really appreciate your support in our, um, our endeavor to learn as much as we can about myeloma so that we can someday prevent it and cure it. That is our goal, our goal. And that's it.